Okay, so I'm not going to take more than probably 10 minutes of your lives today, so you get a bit of your afternoon back. Um, what I am going to talk to you about is a world first for um, RISCOS 3.1 computers. Um, and this would have been really good had it been done 30 years ago. But it's a bit late, it's taken a while to program, um, but it is here. So this is a uh, raster man, and it's a raster bar manager. So what we do, it's a programmer's interface, it's a software module, relocatable module for RISCOS, which allows the programmer to do what Acorn didn't allow you to do in the 90s, which is to reprogram the video hardware at the start or end of every scan line on the screen. So on the video, in the video hardware on the uh, A310 or the A3000, you usually had a screen mode which was 640 pixels wide and 256 scan lines down the screen. This will allow you to reprogram um, the video controller 16 times per scan line at the start or at the end for each of those 256 scan lines. That gives 4,096 reprogramming instructions per frame, um, and many more per second if you're running at 50 frames per second. Uh, you can also reprogram the memory controller twice per scan line, at the start and the end, for 256 scan lines, which is 512 times per frame. And what is the relevance of this? The relevance of this is that you can start to do some very interesting graphical effects. So before I go into the exact effects that are possible, in order to actually allow this reprogramming on every scan line, um, we've had to, I've said here, reprioritize RISCOS interrupts. We've actually disabled the whole of RISCOS, well I've had to disable RISCOS because otherwise it gets in the way, because it was never intended that you'd be able to do this. Um, but in order to make things uh, musical for games and so on, I've had to write, rewrite the QTM music player so that it works in tandem with the redefinition of these scan lines, so you can still get music. And I've also written a replacement keyboard handler so that for games, for example, you can actually have some input and control things on the screen. Um, but yeah, so what can we do? The important thing is this allows you to do uh, significantly more than RISCOS 3.1 would allow you back in the 90s. So it runs on the same hardware you had in 1990, 1988 even, that far back, an, uh, an Archimedes A310 running uh, ARM2 with uh, RISCOS 3. Um, usually you'd be able to get 256 colors in mode 15, for example, which was the maximum the computer was ever designed to do. Or in mode 12, you could have 16 colors on the screen, which were defined from a palette of 4096. Um, but by redefining the scan line, the, the video hardware on every scan line, this allows me to, well, allows the software to um, display at once 4, 000, all 4,096 colors within the video hardware. Um, now, what could this possibly be used for? I've already mentioned we've had to disable RISCOS, so it won't work with the desktop. So any programs which will ever work with this have to be written specifically to use this. Um, but there is, there is a demonstration, and it's running at our stand. Um, and you can, I'll show you some photos of that in a moment. So effectively, it works by using this horizontal synchronization interrupt. So every time, um, I can do it, can't I? Every time the, the screen is drawn from left to right, every scan line of that screen, the 256, at the start of the scan line, uh, the, the uh, raster manager will redefine the palette and redefine the video hardware. It's not just the palette, it's also the memory address used to display the screen, and that can be used for hardware scrolling. It can also be used for hardware mirroring. So if you wanted, for example, to have a mirror effect where the top of the screen is mirrored at the bottom, you can mirror that across the screen using this hardware. And you can use it for raster bars, so colorful lines down the screen. And why might this even be wanted by anyone? The reason why it might be useful, or might have been useful 30 years ago, was because when games were written for uh, the Archimedes, 
everything was written in software. All the graphics plotting, all the scrolling of the screen, it was all written using software, and that was possible because the ARM chip was so fast. Other computers, such as the, uh, the Amiga, which were made for specifically for gaming, had a very slow processor, but did all the graphics in hardware. Um, what this does is it brings that hardware graphics component to the Archimedes. So you've now got a fast processor with hardware graphics positioning and redefining. So it frees up a lot more time on the ARM processor. You're not no longer stressing the processor by doing everything in software. You're using the hardware to do, to do all of that. So in theory, it should allow for games to be written which are much more complex than ever were created on, on the Archimedes. So complex graphics with minimal CPU usage. Um, so I'll show you some pictures of this now. Uh, this is running at the stand. The photo was taken today. And this shows, on the left-hand side, you can see the edge of a, um, an A3010, and with no hardware modifications, running Raster Manager and displaying the entire 4096 color palette of the um, Archimedes hardware. That was all the colors possible at once on the screen. And in fact, although it's redefining each, it's defining each scan line, the way, the way it actually draws up, this is a 256 color mode, screen mode, and the 256 color palette is um, redefined at the end of each scan line, so the next line has a different selection of colors to choose from, and by doing that, you, you're able to display all 4,096 colors. Now this is spread out down the screen over 256 lines. In fact, you could display all those colors in just uh, 16 lines because you have 256 colors going across the screen, 16 lines down, gives you 4096. If the hardware color palette was wider than 4096 colors, you could display more colors, but that is the limitation of the hardware. You can't go beyond what the hardware is. Um, and the next, next picture I'll show is uh, demonstrating shifting the video memory around while. On, on, at the end of each scan line. So this is the base screen. This is what the screen looks like before we start playing with the screen memory. And on the next slide, we have applied a sine wave to the start positions of the, of the screen. So we're moving the horizontal start position of the screen along the sine wave. So as it goes down the screen, this is shifted left and right from a base position in the middle. And if we continue, what you will notice actually is this word down here which says raster is not shifted. And that's another hardware trick. Behind, the, all the background graphics is shifted, but this word raster down here, um, that isn't shifted because it's in fact the mouse pointer redefined as a word and stretched sideways and recolored again on each scan line because the mouse pointer usually has two or three colors but I've redefined the color on different scan lines and the width of the pointer and the position to make it spell the word and as you go down this as you continue to increase the frequency of the sine wave you can see the word raster remains written diagonally across the screen without any effect um, and yet the background becomes even more garbled um, but that's, that's just one simple effect that you can do with this. So, that's my presentation. I hope you've enjoyed it. It was very short. But the key point is, because you've all sat here through to the end, you, you qualify for one cake for arriving to watch the presentation, and one cake for <laughs> staying till the end. So... <laughs> ah, and this, this presentation is uh, me, C3000, on, on the uh, Stardot forum, and Zarchos uh, here, and he has, uh, he's also, he was going to present his programming solutions today, uh, because he's been, oh, you tell him. Oh, the English is going to be difficult. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, so hello everybody. There so, you go. so, 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 so,
Now, if you want to plot some sprites on, on screen, you need a software solution, of course, using the ARM CPU. So you must program something with the ability to correct the shifting on, on each scanline. Okay? Otherwise, what you are going to plot on screen is going to follow the, the wobble. It's not what, 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 what you want. So I've been developing for several uh, years or months uh, because I, I, I have found some uh, better solutions to improve the speed. So I'm about to complete uh, writing the code so that you can plot, plot many sprites on a wobbled screen. Uh, and it will be very fast. So far, I'm able to plot five uh, big sprites. They are about 100 on the 60, 60 169 pixels by 127 pixels, five on screen, moving uh, per VBL. So it's a, to get a smooth animation, 50 frames per second with the screen wobbling. Okay, but not so far. It's not complete uh, because uh, first I'm, I'm lazy. I'm, I'm, uh, okay, I've, I've got a professional life. Uh, it, it was not very very easy for me to understand how to interface interface my code with uh, Steve's code and also I found two new ideas to again improve the, the code. Basically I've got uh, 640 uh, uh, segment plotting uh, routine to cope for, uh, for segments uh, whose left are, are going to be from one pixel to 116 so it's, uh, it's up, up to 160 uh, pixels in left, um, because of the way the Archimedes work, uh, you know, uh, if you want to fast plot sprites on screen, you, you must uh, respect the, the offset from a world boundary using the ARM uh, instructions. So yes, I've got 640 uh, very fast uh, segment plotting routines, and uh, I assembled them together so that I'm able to plot uh, the content of, uh, of a skyline line belonging to a sprite. So sorry for the explanation, this is very technical. Even in French it would be difficult. <laughs> but what, 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 when, it, when it's done, I'm going to release it so everybody will be able to use it. And I think at last we are going to, to be able to demonstrate that even if Acorn uh, intended, intended the Archimedes to be uh, educational machines or professional machines, in fact it had all the necessary resources to be a great gaming machine. And uh, to me, it, surpass, it surpasses what the Amiga can offer because, because, of, uh, because it, it's, it's got everything in, in its guts. And contrary to the Amiga, it's got a very, very powerful CPU. So you can do everything fast and, uh, in, in real time. So you'll see the, the, the results soon, I hope. Unless I found something else to, to, to improve. <laughs> Okay. But Steve, Steve knows more about uh, my, my, my routine, so he could explain far better than me on in, in proper English. So, so sorry. Yeah. If anyone wants a full explanation, please come to the stand and have a cake. And yeah. um, you know, we'll explain while you eat the cakes. Okay. okay? Thanks everyone for your time. Thank you.